Welcome to the course VLSI technology. VLSI technology describes the theoretical and practical aspects of the most advanced state of electronics technology, very large scale integration VLSI. Now they are called ULSI means ultra large scale integration, where an integrated circuit IC chip contains over 10 million semiconductor devices. With VLSI technology, the cost of electronics products will decrease while the system functionality and performance will increase. The VLSI tips will result in the realization of smart and brilliant electronic systems and in the improvement of quality life and global productivity. The IC complexity has advanced from small scale integration SSI to medium scale integration MSI to large scale integration LSI to very large scale integration VLSI and finally to ultra large scale integration ULSI which has 10 to the power 7 or more components per chip. We note that since 19 75, the growth has been mentioned, maintained at a rate of about 40 percent annually. In other words, the number of components has doubled every two years, over 100 million components per chip are available in year 2000. In the early 21st century, we will make into gigabit range and hopefully with IC chips with brilliant, brilliant, uh, billion components. This VLSI technology course will deal mainly with silicon VLSI, the unique combination of silicon's adequate band gap, stable oxide and abundance in nature ensures that in the foreseeable future, no other semiconductor will seriously challenge its preeminent position in VLSI, ULSI applications. And before coming to this explosive growth, let us look back for a moment to the back history. Let us spend some time on evolution of electronics. So let us go back to the evolution of electronics. So in that area, first we can start from the discovery of electron. In 1895, H. A. Lawrence postulated the existence of discrete charge that is called electrons. Just after two years, J. J. Thomson experimentally verified existence of electron and based on this discovery, Brown built the first electron tube. You may remember that few years back, that is in 1997, worldwide people celebrated the hundreds years of discovery of electron. In this last hundred years, lot of evolution has taken place. The science, particularly electronic science has, has forwarded a long development and in 1904, Fleming invented the diode which is called valve and that is a vacuum tube devices which is having 
two electrodes, one is cathode, another is anode. In 1996, D. Faust put a third electrode and that is a called grid into the Fleming valve which was discovered in 1904 and this particular device is called triode valve because it has got three electrodes you know diode has got two electrodes cathode and anode and the third one is control grid. This particular tube known as a triode valve which he called an audion and hence the audion is the first amplifier and you know the device amplifier whose basic function is amplification. Now in 1912 this first application of these valves either it is a diodes and triodes and that application is known as radio and radio is the wireless communication all of you know and in the same year 1912 birth of IRE took place. Now what is IRE? IRE is an institute, is an organization which is a worldwide organization and its name is Institute of Radio Engineers. The purpose of this particular organization is to hold meetings at different parts of the world and to assess the progress of electronics at the same time to know each other the discovery inventions in the area of integrated circuits and electronics and to discuss among the, among the scientists and engineers and at the same time to forecast the future of the electronics. This particular organization which is known as IRE in 1912 at present its name is Institution of Electrical and Electronic Engineers which is known as IEEE. Now the present era begins with the invention of solid state electronics and here the solid state electronics started its journey from the discovery of transistor and the first transistor was conceived by scientists known as Bratton Bardeen. A lateron Shockley proposed junction transistors and worked out its theory. The three scientists namely Bratton, Bardeen and Shockley they received Nobel Prize in Physics in 1956. That was the first Nobel Prize in engineering devices. After three years in 1950 the first grown transistor was reported and 1951 transistor produced commercially. Obviously the first commercial transistors is germanium and then silicon transistors came into the market. In 1958 the revolution of integrated circuit started from the discovery of monolithic circuits which later on known as integrated circuits and this idea first came from a renowned scientist from Texas Instruments and his known is Kilby and now I would like to mention that monolithic idea later on which is known as integrated circuits what is known as monolithic. Monolithic is basically is a combination of two words. One is mono, another is lithos. Lithos is a Greek word. Mono means single and lithos means stone. That means on a single stone and that stone is basically the silicon, single crystal or germanium single crystal uh, wafer. And on this single crystal silicon or germanium wafer, lot of components like transistors, diodes, resistances etc are fabricated and they are integrated together. That is the monolithic circuits and the monolithic transistors so to say. And you know this, this scientist Kilby very recently got Nobel Prize 
from this monolithic ICs that is I think 2-3 years back. He got the Nobel Prize along shared with some other scientists. And 1961 Fairchild and TI together they produced IC commercially. 1965 using the transistors computer was developed and that computer was third generation computer and before that the computers were developed using the valves or before that some other techniques were also used those are known as analog computers just using some analog switches. Now the IC version transistor is the uh, IC version uh, computer is the first IBM system 360. In 1970 semiconductor memory was included in computers and from that particular year that is from 1970 onwards the journey of VLSI basically started. Now you have seen the discovery of the uh, transistors, monolithic transistors and IC is IC uh, came in the market in 1960 and after 10 years approximately 1970 this is the area of uh, this is the uh, large scale integrated circuit era, this is LSI era. Now the before LSI that is in 10 years 60 to 70 those circuits are known as the SSI and MSI, small scale integration and medium scale integration. And basically small to medium to large, the difference is the number of components per chip. SSI, the number of, in SSI the number of components is in the range of 10 to 100. When the number of components exceeds that is from 100 to 1000 then this particular chip is known as MSI or medium scale integrated circuit. When the number of components is 1000 to 10,000 that is known as LSI and which is large scale integration. And the 70 to 75 in that is large scale integrated circuit area uh, era we should say. And after 1975 to 1985, so in these 10 years, tremendous research took place in several corners of the globe. And the main emphasis of that research was how to integrate more and more components into silicon, small piece of silicon chip. So, with that idea means large number of components has to be integrated into a small chip. The transistor geometry has to be reduced otherwise it is not possible. That means you are going to downsize the transistors and there are a lot of advantages in downsizing this transistor geometry and those advantages are namely high integration, multifunction LSI, high integration means more number of transistors you can integrate in a small chip area maybe say 2 to 3 centimeter by 3 centimeter in that area and several functions you can get from that particular chip, high speed operation of the LSI that was another major consideration of all scientists or engineers to have IC which operate at higher speed. And this higher speed is achieved only if you downsize the transistors. In the downsizing the transistors ultimately you are going to reduce lot of parasitic components which are mainly the parasitic capacitances or parasitic resistances etc. And you know if you can reduce the parasitic resistance and capacitances, so the total RC product is going to be reduced which is contributing the delay of any 
ICs. So, the downsizing has effect on increasing speed of any of the LSI or VLSI. Another point is low cost per function of the LSI. That means, if you go on downsizing the transistor geometry, another advantage is low cost. Obviously, cost in one important consideration because if produce some chips or circuits which cost more, then people will buy less. So, to acquire the market, that is the ultimate goal of all designers and engineers. So, once you design something, it has to be marketed efficiently. And for that reason, always you have to consider the cost, whether your design or your technology is cost effective or not, always you have to think. So, if you can downsize means over one silicon wafer, you can have number of chips. So, automatically the process as the processing of single wafer is constant and in the same wafer if you can get more number of chips, obviously the cost of each chip will go down. So, that is the reason why downsizing of the geometry has led to low cost ICs. Now, another point is low power consumption per function of LSI. Power consumption is to be small. If it is a large, so you have to arrange for power dissipation. Otherwise, if power dissipation is not adequate, what will happen? The temperature of that particular chip will increase and as you know, the all semiconductor devices are temperature sensitive. If the temperature increases, so the devices malfunction and at the same time the performance of the circuit will deteriorate. So, always this point you have to remember that when you are designing, you have to see the power consumption should be less and the chips should have adequate power distribution capability. Okay. So, next in this last 25 years, so to say from 1975 to 2000, that is 75 is LSI has entered and after that from 1985 to 1995, we can say last these 10 years is the area of VLSI, where the number of components per chip is more than 10 to the power 3 or 10 to the power 4. And 1995 or 96 beyond is the era of not VLSI, it is another terminology has come that is known as ULSI, that is known as ultra large scale integration. So, we have seen in last 25 years, the number of transistors per DRAM chip has increased by 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 5 times. DRAM you know it is a dynamic RAM chip. Always we refer some particular chip in order to evaluate or in order to judge how much integration is there, how the technology is progressed. So, here always people refer the DRAM chip for the progress of microelectronics. Okay. So, now at the same time operating frequency has increased by 300 times from 1975 to 2000 if you consider then this is the enormous development so far as the operating frequency is concerned. The number of MIPS has increased by 1000 times that is mega instruction per second MIPS you know. This has increased by 1000 times. So, these are the some points of some developments which has taken place last 25 years because of downsizing the transistors in integrated circuits. Now, let us have a comparison year to year particularly if I take the VLSI era that is which is basically I mean that from 1985 to 86 to next 10 years. 
plot how the changes has taken place in VLSI. This particular table will show you how that changes has taken place. And here this, this particular table you can see it has started from 1984 and ended in 1996, basically the VLSI period I should say. And here again the, the parameters which have been considered are the DRAM capacity, wafer size, junction depth, channel length and gate oxide. And you have seen in 84 the technology description was 1.25 to 1.5 micron that is minimum feature size. And what is meant by minimum feature size? That is dependent on lithography and some other parameters. So, minimum 1.25 micron feature you can reliably make on silicon chip. So, that is 1.2 micron technology it is sometimes called. And 87 that has reduced to say 1 micron and 1990 points 75 micron, then 0.5 and then 0.25 micron. So now that 1.25 to 0.25 micron in the last about 10 years from 85 to 96, right about 12 years, okay. In the same time at this you can see that DRAM capacity has increased from 256 kilobyte to 64 megabyte. And wafer size has increased from 100 millimeter diameter to 200 millimeter diameter. 100 millimeter is a 4 inch diameter wafer, and 200 is 8 inch diameter wafer. So, that means you see one important as the feature size reduces, people are at the same time they are thinking how to increase the num size of the wafer. What is the reason? If you increase the size of the wafer, silicon wafer, more number of ICs will come. And so, what will happen? So, if in the same wafer, if if we can increase the number of chips more, so cost of each chip will go down. So, it will be much cheaper. So, that is why the, the technologists are trying to process wafers of larger size. And at present is 2001, in many of the industries they have started processing wafers of size 250 millimeter to 300 millimeter. That means you can think of the size of a particular wafer which is 12 inch diameter, 300 millimeter and 12 inch diameter is just like a rice plate. And at the same time, you, you, you also you should think that the larger diameter wafer processing is very difficult because 4 inch diameter wafer processing the equipments we need, the same equipments cannot process 12 inch diameter wafer. Obviously, the equipment size or equipment specification has to be increased. Another important point is if you go on increasing the wafer size, then you have to ensure that over the entire size, the chips will be of same properties. Chips will perform equally good. In some area, chips working nice. In another area, it is not working nice. Then those who are not working, you have to reject those chips. And for that reason, if rejected chips is more, then automatically cost will go high. So, that is why uniformity is another important parameter. When you are making some ICs, if you go on increasing the chip size or wafer size, not chip size, wafer size, then you have to ensure over the entire wafer, the chips produced are of equal property. Okay? Now, uh, we talk about the, the reduction of size that is lateral geometry. 
what about the vertical geometry? The transistor reduction of lateral geometry will not give you the technology improvement until and unless or performance improvement of ICs until and unless you reduce the, the vertical geometry that is the junction depth. Typical junction depth of the ICs or transistors which were used, which were fabricated in 1984 was around about 0.3 micron and that 0.3 micron in 1990 it came down to 0.2 micron and now you see in 1996 the junction depth is 0 0.07 micron that is 70 nanometer. So now you see from 0.3 micron to 0 0.07 micron it has reached and now it is further less than 0 0.07 micron because it this 0 0.07 is the data of 1996. And the channel length, channel length is another measure how you are reducing the size of the transistor. And I hope all of you know what is the channel length that is the CMOS, the distance between the source and drain is the channel and that channel length is, is in 1990, is 1984 it was 1.3 plus minus 0.3 micron and it has gone down to 0.25 plus minus 0 0.07 micron in 1996 and in 2001 it's, it has reduced further and I, next slide I will show you the, the present era of the VLSI or ULSI what are the typical sizes. And the last parameter is shown the gate oxide in this table that is in 84 it was 25 nan, uh, nanometer and now it is 5 to 7 nanometer. Gate oxide it is thickness of the gate oxide is reduced in every year you see from 25 nanometer means basically 250 angstrom unit and in, in 1990 it was 15 nanometer and now it has reduced to 5 to 70, 7 nanometer that means it is of the order of 50 to 70 angstrom unit. Okay. Now, that was a little bit the LSI area. Now, in 1996 onwards is basically the ULSI area and ultra large scale integration. And in that particular area, now we are standing in 2001. And what will happen in the two, beyond 2001? The scientists or engineers they have planned or they have decided some from the progress of the last 10 years or last 5 years and what we stand today keeping in view of all this data they have projected what will happen after 5 years or after 10 years. So that is known as the road map. The road map requirements of IC fabrication is shown in this particular table. 1997 to 2001 that is one block, another block is 2003 to 2006 and the third block is 2009 to 2012. What will happen in future? The forecast and here in the first row you can see is the feature side which is now nanometer and now there uh, <coughs> there this particular uh, uh, the feature size earlier they used to mention in micrometer and micrometer now has changed to nanometer you see. 97 to 2001 there the feature size is 250 to 150 nanometer that means 0.25 micron to 0.15 micron and the transistor counts per square centimeter it is of the order of 4 to 10 millions of transistors okay that is the present scenario the number of transistors per square centimeter is 4 to 10 millions and number of wiring layers is 6 to 7 what does it mean by that wiring layer that is basically known as level of metallization that means after making the transistors you have to wear 
to have certain function to get a particular circuit we have to connect one transistor to another transistor or one component means one resistor to transistor or capacitor to resistor in a particular fashion that is known as wiring. That wiring is in one level is impossible basically if the number of components or transistors are of the order of million. Okay. Now, how can you interconnect the transistors and 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 uh, resistances which require in a large scale integrated or very large scale integrated circuit and different levels it has been done and from one level to another level actually via hole they connect from one level to another level and in the second level the transistors or resistors are interconnected in certain fashion some of the transistors and then second level to third level making a hole and they can take the metal contact in the third level and subsequently third level some wiring is being done then they go up to the fourth level. In this way in the in the first level some wiring is being done second level third level different transistors are connected interconnected using some metal lines and from level to level connection is being done making a very whole small hole and that is known as vias and by putting some metal film the level to level interconnection is being done. So, that is if you go multiple levels of metallization obviously, technology is becoming much more difficult and in 1997 to 2001 where it is 6 to 7 levels of metallization in 2009 to 2012 we can see it will end up with 8 to 9 level of metallization that is a forecast. And subsequently you can see in the table some other important parameters which is the voltage level this is very important. You see the voltage level is 1.2 to 2.5 volt in 1997 to 2001 and which people forecast in 2009 to 2012 it will be 0.5 to 0.9 volt that is 1 volt circuit design low voltage low power circuit is one of the major emphasis of today's VLSI design. Okay. Low voltage and low power and till 2000 people are thinking of there is 5 volt supply is okay and you have seen most of the digital circuits you are using you have used is a 5 volt supply. Now that is creating problem as I told you if the downside the transistors if the lot of components are integrated in the small silicon chip obviously the to have low power because power distribution will be small so power has to be reduced so low voltage operation is required so the low voltage circuit design is another important area in microelectronics or vla circuit circuit design and another is the performance means operating frequency in 1997 2001 it is 200 to 730 megahertz and you can see in 2009 to 2012 that operating frequency is basically mean clock frequency is 840 megahertz to 1830 megahertz but it's more than gigahertz nearly 2 gigahertz so you see how speed of the circuits is going to increase day by day every year. Okay. Now, this particular table give you a practical feeling of downsizing the transistors and ICs. Again here we have taken the help of DRAM chip as a reference. Now, in 1997, where the minimum feature size was 10 micron, the 10 micron is typically the size of a blood cell. And you see, in 1980, that DRAM capacity has increased to nearly 32K. In 1990, 
it is nearly the 8 megabit and 2000 it is nearly 128 megabit and this 120 megabit 2000 2001 this particular DRAM uses submicron technology that means minimum feature size there was nearly 0 0.25 micron technology and there the size is of the order of bacteria that means over 1997 to 2000 the feature size has gone down from the size of blood cell to the size of a bacteria okay now you can imagine the size minimum feature size has reduced so low that the processing of those particular chips will become much more complicated because the impurities contaminations and defects must be lower than the minimum feature size if the minimum feature size is the size of the bacteria of the order of 0.25 micron so obviously the environment where the ICs are produced must be very very good and ultra pure and ultra clean and in this particular course VLSI technology I will discuss sometimes the requirement of the clean rooms and how to design the clean rooms and what are the several parameters must be satisfied by a clean room where the VLSI chips are fabricated. Now this incredible sinking of the transistors has, has gone down such that in 2003-2006 the CMOS devices with shorter channel length will switch faster and use less power and in this curve you can see here the three color one is blue green and red the blue color is for uh, the VDD that is supply voltage then supply voltage and VT is the threshold voltage and this T oxide is a thickness of the ox gate oxide of MOS. Now the supply voltage has gone down in 2000-2006 this line has been drawn here you can see the channel length is of the order of 0 0.05 micron and the threshold voltage has again gone because you see reduction of the channel length that means here here is 1 micron and gradually channel length is reduced at the same time the VDD is reduced, threshold voltage is reduced and gate oxide thickness is reduced and gate oxide thickness here you can see here of the order of the 2 nanometer or in this particular 2003-2006 is forecasted about 2 to 3 nanometer and at the present that means it is uh, uh, 2001 something like this, uh, this is 2000-2001 nearly so there it is of the order of say less than 50 nanometer, 5 nanometer sorry 5 nanometer so that means less than 50 angstrom, nearly 40 angstrom. So now uh, the lower VDD and VTT and thinner gate oxide will accompany the sinking channel length that is shown in this particular car. Transistors built between the years 2003 to 2006 will have channel length of the order of 0 0.05 micron, VDD of the order of 1.2 volt, threshold voltage of the order of 0 0.25 volt this is the prediction. Now the steady downscaling of CMOS devices, device dimensions basically has been the main stimulus to the growth of microelectronics and the computers over the past two decades. The more an IC is scaled the higher becomes its packing density, the higher its circuit speed and the lower its power distribution. Today after many generations of scaling 
the smallest feature size in CMOS transistor is approaching atomic dimensions and off state leakage current per transistor has been rising because thermal energy does not scale. Now the question is how much longer can CMOS scaling continue? People have started thinking, so if the scaling progress in this fashion, ultimately it will end up with atomic dimensions. And if it ends up in atomic dimension, then the existing physics will not be adequate to explain the behavior of the devices. So, and at the same time, do we need so much scaling? So, this question is difficult to answer and let us for the time being do not try to find the solution of that and let us discuss what will happen at the present with the present uh, scenario of the VLSI downscaling or VLSI integration and in the near future within say 5 years. As the integration level of ICs moves toward 100 million transistors in the next few years, key issues of transistor design must be re-examined for 0 0.1 to 0 0.13 micron generation technology. Earlier, we disregarded the parasitic like off state leakage and gate current. So, we assume the gate current is negligibly small almost 0 and the off state leakage current that means when the switch is off there is no current, but with the, the scaling down of this and gate oxide is getting thinner and thinner, then we cannot neglect all those parameters. So, if gate oxide is thickness is of the order of say, say 5 to 10 angstrom unit only, then we cannot say that there is no gate current. And then some quantum mechanical tunneling may, may happen and in that case the, the whole thing or whole explanation has to be changed. Advances in lithography enable CMOS devices to be built with shorter channel lengths operating at lower voltages. Channel length is, is, is factor of 2 smaller than the generation general lithography dimensions. So, now here actually every time people are predicting something. So, this prediction once is 1994 which is uh, uh, the, the, the curve we can see here this this curve, this color curve and then blue curve is prediction 1997 and then prediction came 1998. So, whatever prediction has been done in 1994 and people found ultimately that that has failed and prediction the, the, the progress has done more has, has, progress has been achieved more than the prediction. Then they again predicted in 1997 that is the blue curve and you can see blue curve particularly in a 2001 if you see the blue curve and you see here the technology is about say uh, the uh, about 140 nanometer minimum feature size. But you see practically 1998 we found the 2001 it has it has been nearly 19, uh, 130 nanometer that means the feature size reduction is, is, is more than what was predicted. Then again they re-predicted so another <laughs> curve came that is 1998 the updated prediction over the years 1997 to you see 2015 and how the feature, feature size goes down from 180 nanometer to 25 nanometer. Now here it is predicted that the 90 nanometer feature size below which extreme UV could be applicable could be reached by year 2005. Now, one device which is CMOS device 
in 2003-2006 is shown in this picture. The VLSI, the advancement particularly, the minimum feature size etc., is, is considered with reference to CMOS transistors, not with the bipolar. Now, in this is the structure of a CMOS transistor and CMOS is a combination of NMOS and PMOS, you know. And here, some of the things is, is notable. In 2003-2006, the CMOS parameters will be design is of the order of 0 0.1 to 0 0.13 micron technology and channel length will be 0 0.05 micron. Channel length is here you see this is the source and this is the drain. So, the source drain, the gap, this is basically the channel length. Here is the source and drain gap is the channel length and this is here is another extension of the source and drain, drain by added one extra implantation and basically the channel length has reduced uh, from source to drain here from this point to this point. And this is the gate and gate oxide thickness is, is, is shown in this figure is very, very small and over this gate oxide P plus poly and for contact silicide has been used, self aligned silicide technology is used here and at the same time the shallow trench isolation is used to isolate one transistor from another transistor. All these parameters, what do you mean by shallow trench isolation and why silicide is used that I will discuss in subsequent classes. This is one structure which people predicted in 2003-2006 and how can you fabricate this CMOS, I will discuss in detail when I will cover the section of the process integration of VLSI circuits. Okay. FT of this particular transistors will be 100 gigahertz and oxide thickness here is 1.5 to 2 nanometer. So, that means here is a 15 to 20 angstrom unit. The source and drain depth, junction depth is 30 to 50 nanometer deep that junction depth is here you see if you look at the NMOS fed. So, from this point to this point, this is the junction depth from PMOS here this green is from this point to this point is the junction depth. That junction depth is 30 to 50 nanometer. Shallow trench isolation that is shallow trench isolation. Isolation is a very, very important area in monolithic circuits and why do we need isolation? I will discuss in detail. Polysilicon gate because over the oxide P plus polysilicon is used here N plus polysilicon used that is why it is known as polysilicon gate. The advantages of the polysilicon gate will be explained also in future. And they have used they will be using in 2000-2006 the self aligned silicide contacts okay. and the self aligned technology will give you certain advantages and that advantage is, is the minimum feature size reduction is possible using self aligned technology. Because every alignment you have to have certain tolerance spacing has to be given for tolerance and if it is automatically aligned that tolerance is you can you can you may not give it. So, for that you can sync the transistor geometries. Now, the VLSI chip in the year 2005, one another uh, prediction is given here that is the 100 million transistors will be there in chip they are predicting and minimum feature size is 0.1 micron and 200 million transistors may be designed in a particular chip, size of the chip will be 520 millimeter square, clock frequency they are predicting 2 to 3 5 gigahertz, IO connections is 4000, level of metallizations, metallizations will be 7 to 8, supply voltage is nearly 1 volt, 
supply current is 160 ampere and power distribution 160 watt. So, if these are the performance, this people are predicting in 2005 VLSI chip. And designers of 100 million transistor chips face daunting challenges in switching currents, optimization, as synchronization, asynchronization, reuse, design skills. These are the challenges, and one has to solve these challenges to have a reliable chip which will be fabricated using millions of transistors. Let me now take you to the microelectronics laboratory at IIT Kharagpur. This laboratory has been set up to give hands on training on IC fabrication to the undergraduate and postgraduate students as well as to take up research and development activities. This laboratory has certain major facilities in the form of class 10, class 100 and class 1000 clean rooms, silicon wafer processing, pattern generator, photolithography, diffusion, oxidation, a UHV system, an iron beam system for deposition and dry etching, sputtering, wafer level testing, silicon and quartz micro machining and integrated optics device fabrication. You can see the stringent requirements for working in the clean room of a VLSI fabrication laboratory. Before entering the laboratory, personnel have to wear special clean room sterilized clothes which are stored in a sterilization chamber, a cap and a pair of gloves are mandatory. In this chamber, the clothes are sterilized by continuous exposure to ultraviolet light. What you now see is an air shower chamber. The air shower chamber helps to sweep away dust particles that may be adhering to the clothes of personnel as an additional precaution. <laughs> 